Welcome to Watch and Learn. Today on Christina's Alaska Journey, we're going to take a closer look at breaking up those spaces and tackling them one at a time. I'm Kim Sandberg and I'm Christina Whitney and we are on part two of Christina's Alaska quilt journey challenge quilt custom quilting whatever we want to call it <laughs> adventure <laughs> adventure seriously so we had a lot of fun last time just seeing how you got started on this project and today we're going to talk about breaking it up into I don't know manageable pieces is that yeah so in the video I talk about how overwhelming the quilt is yeah I mean if you look at the one behind us there's so many different designs mm -hmm. and patterns and what do you pull out what's mm -hmm. the focus so that's always been my biggest struggle with quilting this one is just yeah. trying to figure out how to break it down mm -hmm. so that it's in small enough pieces that I can manage okay so that's kind of the, the focus of this next section all right, awesome. I think that's a, an issue that a lot of custom quilters run into. So let's take a look at the footage that you filmed at home in your own studio and see how she has tackled this. Okay, welcome back to my house. I'm continuing with the Alaska quilt. Just a quick review in the previous video. I did some stitch in the ditch throughout the entire quilt to kind of break things up and did some basting as well. I also worked on the borders. So using some different techniques. Um, today I am going to talk a little bit about the design process and where I'm at now. So I was still kind of stuck. I figured out what I wanted in the border and I was still kind of struggling. So what I did was I took a picture of the quilt and I printed it out on just a regular piece of paper and put it in a sheet protector here. And then I also did the other side with just the center portion. And I've been carrying this around with me so that I can draw on it as I have time. And I've been kind of building on it. My real big breakthrough was at my daughter's volleyball game when, when she wasn't playing, I was drawing and came up with some new ideas. So today we're gonna work on the next section of the quilt. So here's a picture of what it is. And what I'm going to do is take this next inside layer past the, the border, and I'm gonna break that up a little bit more by creating some channels and some echoes, and that's gonna help me to define that space, but it's also making it a little bit more manageable for me. So I'm not feeling like I'm filling the entire quilt, but I'm just focusing on one small section at a time. Now, this particular section I also came to the realization that I'm not going to be working with the piecing so much. Um, I'm going to be doing my designs overlapping different colors, different fabrics, and I'm not going to really worry so much about following the piecing. And to be honest, that was a struggle for me. I'm used to following the piecing, so I'm going a little bit out of my comfort zone here, and um, hopefully it's going to turn out but today we're gonna to work on some channels and some feathers, as well as some straight lines, a little bit of ghost quilting, so stay tuned. I already went ahead and stitched this thicker channel all the way around the whole quilt, creating this smaller section right through here. And I did that using my ruler with the largest echo foot. And you'll notice I'm repeating designs as I go throughout the quilt, so this thicker ch um, channel is the same as the thicker channel that I did in the border as well as around the square. So picking a few elements, continuing it throughout the quilt brings a little bit of consistency there. Next thing that I want to do to break up this space just a little bit more and to separate it from these ribbon candy designs in here is I'm going to do a quick little channel or an echo and um, this one I'm doing pretty small. And I'm just using my skinny ruler and stitching along.
with that channel and that echo channel that's separating the ribbon candy design here from what's up here also, it's giving me some boundaries in here. So I'm gonna play in here now and I'm gonna do some feathers. So the first thing that I wanna point out is that I've changed to my micro foot. Um, this is gonna give me a little bit more visibility as I am working in this section. And then I'm also going to use this seam line as one of my spines, this as a spine. And so what I'm gonna do, oh, and also this echo line. I'm gonna just kinda do some little dashed lines along here. And that's giving me some more boundaries that I'm not actually stitching, but it's a visual for me as I'm doing these feathers. And that will make a little bit more sense as we get further into the stitching. I'm just about ready to stitch. What I'm gonna do is check my settings. I am in regulated cruise at a speed of 250, uh, 13 stitches per inch, and with my needle in the down position when I stop. And I, again, have my micro foot on, and I'm gonna come to this center here, bring up my bobbin thread. I'm gonna do a couple little tie-off stitches. And then I want to remind myself of my stitch path. So I'm going to do some feathers along here, filling in this space. And then I'll come back and do some on here, 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 and here. Okay, here we go, wish me luck. those feathers are done. Thank goodness. Um, so here's a little tip though. When you are doodling and practicing these designs, make sure that you're doing them in all directions. So at the top of the quilt, I had my feathers going one way. Um, at the bottom, they were going the opposite and then in from the sides. So being able to change the direction of the designs is very helpful. So that's my tip on that. And now we're going to move into the star section. working in this star section right here. So this is kind of down in the corner. First thing that I did was um, 
take out all my basting stitches, making sure to pull up the bottom as well. Let's see, I've got another section here. Okay, so this is the section I'm working in. I've only got these three light blue diamonds, and this dark one, I'm leaving that in a different section. So what I'm gonna do is in this cream section is create a ghost diamond. So the first thing there was to mark my center point. So I just used a regular ruler, and I've already marked all the way around on those center parts. Then I'm going to take my ruler bring my machine over and again I'm back to my sure foot and I'm just gonna start here so I'm gonna be using these piecings where the diamonds kind of intersect and change fabric there to line things up so from that point to the center point that I marked here I'm gonna go ahead and stitch And then lining up with that point that I was just talking about. And then I could just go all the way around doing that outside, but I'm going to stitch around this entire diamond. Now this side right here has already been stitched uh, when I did my initial stitch in the ditch on the first video. So now I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna do a, kind of a modified echo. So I'm coming all the way to the point here, but I'm gonna come a quarter inch in on these other three parts. To do that, I'm gonna line the edge of my ruler up right on that corner. Line the ruler up on the previous stitch line. Now on this one, I'm going to leave that quarter inch spacing from the edge of the ruler to the center so that I can come all the way back into the center. Okay, I am gonna have some over stitching as I continue on to this next section, stitching in the ditch. So I've got all of the stitch in the ditch around the whole thing done, the inside little quarter echo. Now I'm gonna do another echo around the outside of this star. So to do that, I'm going to travel out along this line that I've already stitched. 
And I'm gonna stop when the edge of my foot is right on that previous stitch line. So the ones that are in the white, I'm just gonna stitch down till I hit the blue and then travel across. The ones that um, are in the light blue, I'm gonna bring it all the way out and down. There's all the echoing all the way around. The last step that I'm gonna do in this block for now is to add some straight lines. And I'm gonna take my water soluble pen that I've been using a lot, and I'm gonna mark the direction that my lines are go because I actually did one of these blocks earlier and I had my lines going the wrong direction. So now I have to unpick and I hate doing that. So that'll help me remember which way. For this section, I'm using my straight edge, and I like this one because it has lots of lines and spacings, and it's got the numbers marked on here. And I'm gonna do half inch spacings. So the center, I will have a line drawn right on the center. So I'm gonna use this center line as my base, I guess you could say, that I will line up the ruler with to create each one of the half inch lines. Okay, so the half inch are these dotted lines. I'm gonna put the ruler up against the foot and I'm gonna work up in this top section first. It's just a little section. And I'm on a straight line, so I know I need to go ahead and move my foot a little bit. So I'm just gonna echo or trace back up on the line I already did until I can adjust this ruler so that a dotted line is on the center of my piecing through here. Okay, and I'm gonna do a straight line coming out, and I'm gonna an echo up, not echo, uh, retrace, move my ruler to the next dotted line, lining it up with my piecing again, bring my foot to the ruler, and stitch along. And as I'm moving the foot up, I'm actually eyeballing the a little bit to see about a quarter of an inch from the stitch line to the edge of the foot. And that kind of gets me into the ballpark of where I need to be. Then I can line up the ruler and adjust the foot as needed. Okay, so that's the last one in that section. Next section, same thing, finding that dotted line, whichever one is closest. Bringing the foot to the ruler and stitching the line. I'm gonna adjust the ruler to the next placement. And sometimes I have a hard time doing this diagonal line, but I don't really wanna move this big ruler out of the way. So I'll just grab a little ruler and just hold it in place to help me travel down to the, the bigger ruler. Okay, adjust the ruler. And we're just gonna continue doing that all the way around the block. And sometimes you break your thread. So 
since we're here, let's give you a couple tips on working with monopoly. <laughs> it's really hard to see. So sometimes I'll take a Sharpie and draw on the edge of the thread with the Sharpies so that that makes it a little bit easier to see. Um, I also have found that if I have my needle on a dark fabric, it's easier for me to see. When it's on the light, I, for some reason, I just cannot ever see it. And I don't have any lights on because they flicker when I'm filming and I don't have my glasses on, but I might have to take a break and go grab those. Oh, look at that, I got it. Okay, I'm gonna bring it back to where I had it in place. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about breaking my bobbin, it's still in place there. I just pulled it up a little bit. I'm gonna do a couple tie down, tie, tie offs. Put my ruler back in position. And I'm stitching down. I'm gonna pause here, get rid of those extra threads that I don't need. Putting them in my garbage. Now we'll continue around again. That block is done as of right now. Who knows, I might change my mind and come in and add some more stuff in there. We'll see. We're back. That was a lot of fun. Uh -huh. Again, filming at my own home by myself. <laughs> Be nice to the videographer. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. um, but I was able to you know, create some different sections for mm -hmm. this, this quilt that I focused on. Creating channels to break the spaces apart. Mm -hmm. 
I even did some feathers and got a little wild and crazy and didn't pay attention to where I was going. And, and it's all organic and it <laughs> all comes together. But in the next section that we're gonna do, part three, I'm gonna focus on I'm looking at Kim's quilt to figure out which color she's got. <laughs> Pretty much the section that has orange in it. All of those yeah. those sections around there, those four okay. different quadrants. Uh -huh. So we'll we'll tackle that in the next section. All right. So be sure to look for the first part of this if you missed it. And three and four will be coming up really soon. Be sure to always use hashtag handy quilter on any quilts that you post on social media. You never know, your quilt may, might be featured at the end of one of our videos. Be sure to give us a like and subscribe and have fun quilting.